Yeah, I'm going to make some announcements. Uh, media in the uh, workroom, we've been told that Texas is on its way. I have a couple of uh, announcements to make before we start the Texas News Conference. Uh, game time on Sunday, I'm sure you've heard, but if not, will be 4.05 p.m. Central. 4.05 Central on Sunday, okay? Interviews for tomorrow, uh, a correction. The first interview will be Texas, and that starts at 2.50. And the Miami press conference starts at 3.40 tomorrow. Um, satellite coordinates, again, for all the broadcasters, Galaxy 17, K16, slot A, with a downlink of 12006.5V, as in Victor. Remember to turn off your cell phones here in the interview room. And when the microphone comes to you, Addie is on my left, Rachel's on my right. Uh, please state name and affiliation. Tell us who you are, where you're from. And remember, recording the press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Uh, media listening in on Zoom, you're welcome to ask questions. Just signal us with the raise hand feature, and we'll try to give you that opportunity, okay? I think the Longhorns are here, and they will be on stage in just a bit. Okay, we are now joined by the University of Texas um, head coach Rodney Terry. Student athletes are Ty Tyrese Hunter and Marcus Carr. Uh, coach, congratulations, you're in the Elite Eight. Yes, sir, we're excited about it. Um, I'd like to just start off by uh, passing my condolences and, and prayers off to uh, uh, Willie Cager. Uh, we lost him this, this past week. He was a true pioneer. Uh, in college athletics. He was uh, on that 1966 uh, national championship team in El Paso. And, uh, boy, no one loved basketball more than Willie. And uh, I just wanted to, wanted to make sure I, I recognized him tonight. Um, excited for our guys. I thought we uh, played one of our better defensive games tonight that we played all year. Played against a really good Xavier offensive team that really pushes the ball hard in transition and makes you really have to guard on offense. They play with great pace of play. A lot of respect for Sean Miller uh, uh, as a coach in his program. Uh, but, uh, again, proud of my guys on how they, how they came out and really put their will on this game from start to finish. It was a really good team win for us tonight. Okay, thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions. Our first one is going to be on your left in the back. Mike Metcalf, ESPN for Marcus and Tyrese. Uh, if the decision were up to you, would you make that man your permanent head coach? And also, what has he done to help you all get to this point after everything you endured? Tyrese, why don't you take that one first? Um, I mean, we just living in the moment, you know. Um, he tell us every day, uh, seize the moment, live where your feet is. And, you know, we, we try not to look too far down the road and just, you know, see how we can get better each and every day. Um, I mean, he helped us from day one since the summertime. Um, just keeping it real with us, you know, wanting to develop our games um, and getting us ready for moments like this. And it, like we said, you know, from, I mean, for the past two years for me since day one, you know, Meeting RT, he's been nothing but an amazing coach, a guy who's pushed me to get better, and he is my head coach. So, Okay, let's stay on the left. David Smale, Field Level Media. Coach, I'm sure you had somebody scouting the first game. What is your intention on stopping uh, Nigel Pack? Well, you're not going to let me enjoy this for one night, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Nigel Pack, is a, he's a terrific player. You know, he's a first-team All-Big 12 performer a year ago. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, everybody in the league, we had the game plan for him, you know, a year ago at K-State. Uh, really good shooter, really good offensive player, uh, just a really good cerebral uh, basketball player. Knows how to play the game the right way, plays with great pace. Uh, but he's got other great teammates over there. That's a great team over there. Uh, their guard plays really good. They share the basketball really well in terms of pa passing the basketball. Their interior players play really well today against a really physical Houston team. 
Uh, so, but nothing but respect for Coach Laranega and what he's been able to do over the course of his career. His teams just win. Uh, so we know we'll have our hands full with the really good Miami ball club. Okay, you're on the front. Uh, Thomas Jones, Austin American Statesman. Uh, two part. First, Coach, I'm going to ask you how's Dylan DeSue and what are his chances of playing Sunday? And then for either of the guys, when Dylan went down, um, how did that change? If, if it changed anything, how you approached uh, the game and what did y'all do to make up for his absence? You know, our training staff's done a great job all year long. Warren, we've got the best in the business. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we've we been working with Dylan all, all week long, and uh, we showed some good progress. And then we take a step back, show some progress. But, but nevertheless, they, they worked it all week, you know. And the last thing you want to do is put a young man out there uh, that's not ready to go full tilt. Um, I wanted to give him that moment, though, to start the game and, and have a couple trips because he's worked so hard. He's earned to be the right to be here in a regional and play in a regional. And, uh, but we knew we weren't going to have him very much in this game tonight. We'll continue to, to go day-to-day with his, with his progress. Uh, but we got the best in the business working with him. But we won't put him out there unless he's, unless he's full tilt to go. Uh, I thought these guys here have been great teammates all year, and we've all played all year long next man up. And uh, they had his back tonight in a big way. He's carried us. These guys had his back tonight. Now on the aisle. Hello. Jeff Howhorns, 24-7. Rodney, I know you've talked all year about everything starts for you guys on defense. But just talk about the job your guys did, uh, especially on the perimeter tonight, to you know limit solely to what they did. And uh, they did, Kunkel and those guys didn't really get going until late. Yeah, no, we, we did a really good job of not giving those guys a lot of separation. Tyrese was terrific uh, early in the game on Boom. I mean, he did a great job against Sule, not really letting him get comfortable, get to his sweet spot to where he could score the basketball. You know, really made him uncomfortable for a better part of the first half. We knew he was going to come out. He's too good a player uh, to, to completely shut down. You just want to continue to contain him. Uh, and, and the competitor that he is, he's going to continue to play. Uh, but we did a great job really really guarding their perimeter players tonight. And uh, um, a lot of that goes to, to, to Marcus and and Timmy and uh, Terry, all those guys. Every guy came in and really tried to play hard defensively. You know what Tyrese was doing from start to finish uh, with a really good offensive player. Coaches left. Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman, for all three guys. Um, you had some foul problems. You knew Dylan was going to be limited, and um, you just didn't let up. What does it say about the resolve of this team? And for you, Coach, um, what kind of advantage is it to have old guys that don't panic in moments like this. Why don't we start with Marcus? Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, we knew, you know, before the game that we wouldn't have Dylan for the whole game. So, like Coach said, all year long we've had that next man up mentality. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we didn't have TA in the Big 12 championship, and you know, other guys stepped up. So, um, we just wanted to really play for him. Uh, we knew how much you know this would mean to him. We all got emotional in there, just knowing that he wouldn't be out there, but. We all knew, you know, the job that we had to do for him. So, CB obviously stepped up in a big way and played, you know, to the ability that we know he can, and he helped us a lot. And everybody out there really stepped up their game in, in place of Dylan, and we're going to continue to do that. Hi, Reese. Um, you know exactly what Marcus said. Um, we just having that uh, mindset. Um, I mean, next guy is always ready um, in our bench and being deep. Um, and coaches do a good job of, you know, preparing us for moments like this just in case stuff like this happens, um, you know, in a moment like this. Um, so just go out there and play hard and just have each other back. We were here, we were here in the same position a couple of weeks ago in the Big 12 tournament. We didn't have Timmy Allen, a uh, very productive player for us over the course of the season. We didn't have him for three games. Other guys got a chance to step up and had opportunities. I thought CB came in and gave us some incredible minutes uh, for a better part of the game. I thought Brock came in and gave us great minutes. I thought Dylan Mitchell, you know, did his part in terms of what we needed to do. But, but uh, this has been a very, you know, resilient team all year long. And, you know, we've been in this position before. And, uh, um, you know, when you play in that Big 12, te- uh, Big 12 league, you've been battle-tested. And, uh, you know, it's not anything you really hadn't faced all year long. Foul trouble, an injured guy. You just keep playing and keep working the game for 40 minutes. We have about five minutes to go in this interview session. 
Our uh, next question will go here on the right. Uh, Nick Mullis, San Antonio Express News. Yeah, Rodney, obviously if, if uh, Dylan was out there, he probably would have spent a lot of time guarding their seven-footer. Without him, you know, I think he, you know, he had 15, but he took 19 shots to get there. Um, just what did you think of the job that you know, CB and Dylan did? And then just you know, the on-ball defense of, of Tyrese and Marcus and how that kind of impacted what Xavier wanted to do. Well, we knew, Dick, we are going to try to keep these guys uncomfortable uh, in the full court and also in the half court. So our pressure defense up the floor, trying to take the ball out of Sule's hand and make somebody else initiate offense was going to be really big for us. They're a big hit-ahead team. We needed to try to limit you know, their, their, uh, their pace of play up the floor. thought our guys did a really good job of that. We worked on that uh, the majority of the week. We need a big fella that could be a factor in the game. We're going to have to try to block him and Hunter out. Hunter had been playing really well for those guys as well. And, uh, you know, at half, I think they had six offensive rebounds. We knew we had to come out and do a better job of blocking those guys out uh, out and keeping them off the glass. But really, you know, proud of the way our guys battled. I thought CB, I thought Brock used their quickness in there. Dylan Mitchell used his quickness. We knew we were going to have to use Timmy in the post as well. Um, you know, and again, I think all those guys by committee really got in there and tried to do the job for us. Okay, here on the extreme left. Okay, uh, for any of the three of you, we talked about the fact you were here two weeks ago. Does familiarity with the surroundings, with the crowd, with the court, with the rims, the backdrop, anything, does that help you as you come back here to T-Mobile? You just want one of them? Any of them. Okay, we'll call on Tyrese. Um, I mean, like you said, we've been here before. Um, a lot of these guys and us, we played in the Big 12, uh, played in this arena. Um, you know, so, you know, I say, you know, just having our fans coming out, having that support. Um, any team we play is going to be a big game for us. And, you know, just come out and just be us. Okay, here on the front left. CBS Sports, Rodney, for those of us that don't know, when was Dylan hurt? How was he hurt? Because it was described as a bone bruise. And what is his availability for Sunday? Well, again, it'll, it'll be day-to-day -day right now at the moment. Um, he, he got injured in the last ball game. In our last ball game, and we started, you know, the next day we immediately started – you know, trying to work on treatment and trying to see what we can do to try to put him in the best position, hopefully at the end of this week, uh, to be in a position to play. We, we made some pretty good progress at one point. Uh, and then, you know, we had a setback or two. And, uh, um, you know, again, we have the best in the business working with him. And uh, we'll, we'll put him out there if, he, if he's 100%, but we're not going to put a young man who has a great future ahead of him out on the floor if he's not ready to be out on the floor. I think we have some uh, media on Zoom. Let's take a question from them, Alfred. Corey Mose, please unmute yourself. Identify your affiliation and ask your question. Uh, Corey Mose, KBU Sports. Congratulations on the win tonight, fellas, and, of course, Coach. Uh, two questions, one from Marcus. Uh, when you hit that circus shot, when the clock, shot clock was running down, is that when you knew it was going to be all's night? And then for Coach Terry, uh, throughout the season, we've seen your squad interact with the crowd, interact with the fans, say, whenever there's a run going on. So tonight, I saw a moment you were trying to corral Jabari and Timmy to the huddle. So uh, how do you balance letting them like show that confidence as hoopers, but then also keeping them focused for the job at hand? I would say from our first couple possessions, just the way we were guarding on defense and our intensity and seeing how everybody was locked in. I knew that, you know, we were here to we were here to play. Um, obviously, me hitting that shot, it didn't hurt at all. Uh, it was nice to see that one go in and, you know, not have that possession be empty. Um, but really, I know whenever we're locked in or when we, whenever we have a really good chance to win the game is when we're locked in on defense and I see our intensity and everybody's just really locked into the game plan. Okay, we are virtually out of time. We'll have one last question in the back on the left. Payne Williams, Daily Texan. Uh, Coach, you've been coaching these big games at Texas since the early 2000s under Coach Barnes. How do you think those experiences and big games have uh, prepared you for tonight? <clears throat> well, again, I think, you know, you learn over the course of the, the NCAA tournament, you have to play the game for 40 minutes. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're a pretty emotional team. A lot of times we, we feed off our emotions in terms of how hard we play. And I've got an older team that really understands, you know, playing with poise, playing with emotion but also trying to finish the game as well. Uh, in the NCAA tournament, you've got to play start to finish. I mean, even if you're up 15, you're up 20, you've got to play it all the way to the end. And, uh, you know, I think over the course of, of my career, you learn that uh, in terms of, you know, anything can happen in March. That's why it's the madness. So, you know, I think uh, just really trying to steer these guys to continue to want to play for 40 minutes. You can't waste 20 minutes. Every possession is valuable uh, in the NCAA tournament. And, uh 
uh, continue to want more. I mean, each round. I mean, don't be satisfied. We'll enjoy this victory for one night like we, we have all year long, and uh, we'll be on to the next challenge and, and very quickly with a quick turnaround against a really good Miami team. We'd like to just say thank God for this opportunity. God put us in this position today. We wouldn't be here okay, without him giving us this opportunity today. Okay, Coach. Tyrese and Marcus, thank you for being with us. Um, congratulations on your victory, and we will see you tomorrow. The first interview session begins at 2.50, and that will be Texas. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat>
there are times when we started to score and then we had an equally hard time defending them. They, they were the better team. And uh, sometimes you have to tip your cap to the team you played. We were ready. Uh, we were uh, prepared. We had a great week. There's nobody up here that didn't want to win as bad as any player in the world would want to win a basketball game. But we ran into a team that was better than us. Uh, my comments about this year's team, I could go on forever. I told them after the game, among the many teams that I've had, I don't know if I've ever been more proud of a group, a coaching staff, uh, than this group. Uh, what we've been able to accomplish this year speaks for itself. You know, 15 and five in the Big East, being in a Sweet 16 game, uh, and just really we came a long way from November until uh, late March. And these guys right here had a lot to do with it. Uh, really proud of them. I think they represented Xavier University about as well as you can as a student athlete. And this is where we get off. It's always hard. Uh, I also told them that the Elite Eight, it's an abyss. It is. If you, if you get to the Elite Eight, it only means that you didn't get to the Final Four. It's about make the tournament. Can you get to the Sweet 16? We did it. And can you get to the Final Four? And uh, where we got off is we got off at the Sweet 16, and uh, we set the tone for a lot of great things moving forward. Okay, Coach, thank you so much. Let's go to questions. Mike McCaff, ESPN. Sean, were they different from what you saw on film with them, and how so? They were quicker. They were you know, toughness-wise, the one thing that I know a number of those guys, so I think we had a good sense that they were tough, but um, they're, they're very experienced. You know, we're experienced as well, but their age, their experience, you know, Timmy Allen, who I know really well, I mean, his, his stats never truly reveal the, t the type of player that he is. He's a winner, and I think these guys will tell you that their defensive pressure and their toughness, we felt it from the opening tip. Um, and look, I've watched them play Kansas twice recently. And when I saw how that game went, both games, you knew you're playing one of America's best teams. And uh, they were that today. Other questions? OK, here on the front, on the left. Adam Baum, Cincinnati Enquirer. Sean, when you took over this program a year ago, Xavier was a little bit stuck in a spot where they didn't really want to be. Um, how much fun? was this season to, to get them back to, to where I think Xavier wants to be and expects to be? I mean, we, all of us here, I mean, trust me, there's a lot of hard work, but we had a blast. I mean, we really did. Uh, and I think back to our scrimmage that we had in uh, early, maybe late October, and think about where we were as a group, the lack of familiarity with each other. You know, I don't know if we're allowed to tell you the results of that scrimmage, but I would just say it didn't go well for us. Um, and looking where we're at, I mean, uh, we played a game at Marquette in which we had a couple guys injured, and obviously Marquette is a great team. And, you know, if that game goes a little different at the very end, you know, we might have been co-champs of the Big East regular season. I mean, we played at a very high level. UConn, who I believe can win it all, I love their team. You know, we beat them twice. We went to Providence to Villanova. We did some remarkable things. And it was never easy for us. Uh, and really, sometimes I think as we performed, not everybody really truly understood what we were accomplishing, except except us. And uh, But these guys, their work ethic, their unselfishness, you're right. You know, in the CentOS, there's, you know, you commemorate those second weekend teams in the NCAA tournament on the, on the pillars in the in the refreshment stand, corridor, lobby, whatever you call it. And uh, these guys have one, you know. Our history is rich. There's been a lot of Sweet 16s, a lot of, a couple of Elite Eights. But this group right here will be one of one of those teams now. And uh, that's something that nobody can take away from them and certainly nobody can take away from all of us. Okay, in the middle. Yeah, right here, Caleb No with WCPO Channel 9, Cincinnati. Uh, Adam, I I, I get it, man. It's, you know, emotional. Clearly, you know, it's emotional for you coming off of this thing. Um, what for you, though, personally makes this so tough or emotional? Uh, I mean, this has been 
one of my favorite years of, of just playing basketball in general. Uh, I feel like this group, we've we've had so much fun together. I feel like we all gel really well. Uh, we have great relationships with each other. Uh, and I would say the, the thing that makes it the toughest is just that I don't want it to end. Uh, I don't want this to be the last time I take off uh, this Xavier uniform. Uh, so it definitely hits home. Okay, let's, you have a follow up? Okay, we'll do that and then we will take a question from Zoom. Okay. Paul Frischer, Big East Digital Network. Sule, I know you only got to play one year at Xavier, but what are you going to remember most about playing in a Xavier uniform? Uh, I remember uh, I remember these guys. I remember my coaches. I remember the Sentai Center. Uh, I remember the, uh, the faculty, um, staff, everybody in the building. I remember everything. Um, I know my, my, my time here was short. Um, it went by very, very fast. It just felt like I got here in the summer. Um, not too long ago, but um, I remember everything. I appreciate this university. I appreciate Coach for believing in me, giving me the chance, opportunity to come here and play. And um, I just appreciate everybody. Okay, let's go to Zoom. Dan Tortora, please unmute yourself. Identify your affiliation and ask your question. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, you see the emotion of this team the last time that you led. Xavier was back in 2008-9. The road to come back to this school and leave this school again, just what it's personally meant to you. And when you look down the line at these student athletes and, and see their emotions, just what you want to say to them about their fight this season. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've really said it time and time again. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity uh, to be the head coach at Xavier. You know, it's a place that really embraces students it's a wonderful place to go to school. It's an incredible place to play college basketball at because people care so much. It's the city of Cincinnati. It's the campus community. Like Sule mentioned, you know, our home court, what it feels like. You get 17 home games a year, and these guys play in front of a great crowd all 17 times. Uh, you know, the thing about this tournament I mean, it's incredible because of what you're watching. The thrill of victory and the pursuit of a Final Four for all of us and the reality of, of it all ending. And in some cases, careers ending, seasons ending. And um, it's what makes it so special. But in this case, these guys right here, uh, they gave us everything. They really did. When you lead America in assists, I don't know if you really have to say much more than that. There's only one team that can be number one in assists, sharing the basketball, playing together, being unselfish, and that's what we did for a large part of the season, almost from start to finish. It was, from that perspective, a great journey, a lot of fun, and I think this group right here has set the tone for a bright future as well. Closing questions now. We'll go to the left here in the middle. Uh, yeah, so Jack is for you or anybody else, if anybody else wants to, you know, comment on it. But, Jack, it seemed like uh, throughout the course of the game, especially the first half, a lot of those shots down low that you would typically make just weren't going in or hitting every piece of iron and not going in. What made it so difficult down there tonight? And I, it, it, how frustrating is that as that's happening? Yeah, I thought, you know, that was a huge emphasis for our team going into the game. Um, they did a great job of getting me the ball in spots. And uh, I think, you know, Texas, all credit to them. They're a great defensive team. Um, they got really quick guys down there, and I think that kind of sped me up. And I was maybe rushing shots where I could have, you know, taken more time. And, uh, man, it's just – it hurts. I love these guys out here. Um, really wanted to win this game. You know, I feel like we all, we all did across the board. Um, but we're not going to let this game, you know, define our season. Um, we accomplished a lot of great things, and we have a lot to be proud of, for sure. We're out of time, but we're going to sneak in one more question here on the front. Colby, did this season exceed your expectations? What were, what were your thoughts coming into it, and, and how do you feel about the way that it turned out? Uh, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it uh, – exceeded uh, my expectation. But, um, you know, you said expectations beginning of the season, um, but just to see it happen in real time is, is different. Um, 
So, I mean, I've had a blast this season. Um, all of our guys, we put in the work, and um, I feel like the results showed. And um, this is a season that everyone should remember and be proud of. So, um, it's been a great season for sure. Okay, guys, thank you so much, and congratulations on a really terrific season. Remember our interview schedule for tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Texas will be first at 2.50. And then Miami will be the second interview beginning at 3.40. And game time on Sunday will be 4.05 p.m. Central.